is a product gland tumor? Well, let's start with what is a tumor? A tumor is simply a growth. And the product gland is a salivary gland. So if you have a growth within your product gland, you have a product tumor. What causes a product gland tumor? I promise you that's the most common question patients ask when they come in. I don't have a great answer. Nobody really knows what causes product gland tumors. We have a lot of theories, but nothing is really a direct relationship. It's not like the other tumors that you hear about in the rest of the body that may be caused definitely by tobacco use or something of that nature. We don't really know. What are the symptoms of parotid cancer? Well, usually most patients will complain of discomfort, some sort of pain. There will usually be some sort of growth or firm mass associated with the parotid gland. Many times the skin overlying the parotid gland doesn't slide nice and smooth like it should. And unfortunately, very often, it's associated with facial paralysis. Should a parotid tumor be removed? Well, personally, that's a question I think should be addressed between a patient and their surgeon. But I'll tell you what I tell my patients. I ask them the question, do you feel like you're healthy enough that you plan to live another 10 years? And if they tell me yes, I generally say yes, I think you should move forward and remove the tumor. Why? Because it is only going to get larger. And we don't want to leave something there that could potentially turn into a malignant process when we have the opportunity to remove it. Do benign parotid tumors have to be removed? That word, have to, I would have to say no. They generally do not have to be removed. If you are willing to let it grow, and then you can, you can live with it. Now, you should be aware that I've seen them go from this size to this size. Some of them get large enough where they need their own social security number. So, I would tell you, it depends upon the rate of growth and the patient's desires. How long does it take to recover from a prodidectomy? That's gonna vary, obviously, from patient to patient and surgeon to surgeon. I can only tell you my experience. By and large, parotid surgery is always outpatient, meaning you go home the same day you have the surgery, and you eat regular food and do normal things the same night of surgery. But when we talk about recovery from the standpoint of when do the sutures come out, that's generally about a week after surgery. And when can you really resume sort of exercise and normal uh, physical activity? About two weeks. How do you achieve facial nerve preservation and prodidectomy surgery? Well, it probably all stems from just knowing your anatomy as a surgeon and having very meticulous dissection techniques. However, there are some other technologies that we use, such as facial nerve monitor, which lets us know when we get near the facial nerve, and a facial nerve stimulator, which allows us to test different fibers and see is that a nerve fiber versus a connective tissue or potentially some sort of vessel. So these techniques as a whole allow us to preserve the facial nerve during surgery, but the number one most important um, element to doing it properly is experience. What causes a blocked parotid gland? Well, blocked parotid glands are generally caused from something blocking the flow of saliva through the duct that carries the saliva from the parotid gland into your mouth. The most common thing that we know that will block that flow is a stone. Stones are usually made up of some sort of hard mineral, such as calcium. Other things that could cause a blockage could be inflammation from some sort of infection. Uh, we'll call that parotitis. You hear of things such as mumps, viral infections, autoimmune disorders. All these will cause inflammation. And finally, stenosis. This is where the duct is narrow. So it's almost like you're pinching the your, your garden hose, the water just can't flow as well. So all of these will cause a blocked parotid gland. Can parotid tumors come back? Yes, they absolutely can. Although during surgery, surgeons try to remove the parotid tumor in its entirety, there are times when you get what's called seeding, meaning a small portion of the, the tumor was left behind. 
and it will regrow. So when we say come back, it's not like they left and came back like when your friend says, I'm going to the store and I'll be back. It's more like they never really completely left if you get my drift, meaning 98% of it was taken out and a small portion, the last 2% is still in the body. So it grows and we say, oh, it came back, but in reality, it was never really gone. What's a deep low parotid tumor? Well, there is no actual deep low per se, meaning if you were to take a parotid gland and you were to dissect it, you wouldn't see a superficial part and a deep part. You would just see one gland. What defines the deep lobe is running through the parotid gland are the facial nerve branches. Whenever we are talking about any part of the gland that is superficial to the course or the plane of those facial nerves, we call that the superficial part of the gland. And when we talk about the part of the gland that is deep to the plane of those nerves, we call that the deep part of the gland. So any tumor that's growing in the deep part of the gland, we call a deep parotid tumor. Is parotid gland swelling serious? Generally speaking, it's more frightening than it is serious. Usually parotid gland swelling either comes from some sort of inflammation from an infection or some sort of mechanical blockage of the flow of saliva, usually from a stone. This can be very alarming for patients and it can give them quite a scare but it's usually not life-threatening. So I don't think it's serious, but I do think it's a medical situation that does need a specialist to take care of. How do you get rid of a swollen product gland? A lot of people will try things like hot or cold compresses, and sometimes that will get them some relief. But quite often, it really just depends upon why you have the swollen gland. If you have the swollen gland because of some sort of infection, you'll need to figure out what that in, in, infectious agent is. Is it a virus? Is it a bacteria? Is it a fungus? And you'll have to treat that appropriately. If it's swollen because of a tumor, you'll have to figure out what type of tumor it is and then you'll have to treat that appropriately. And finally, if it comes from some sort of mechanical blockage of the flow of saliva, you'll need to diagnose that and then relieve that mechanical obstruction.